Okay, so we have a z-score conversion problem here, a standard normal conversion problem. Uh, as you might get from the name conversion, there's really two directions that these types of problems can go. Either you have a specific raw score or raw unit or a specific data point or a cutoff, and you're trying to get the portion above or below that, that score, or you're given the portion above or below some mystery score, and you need to find what that score is in, in original units or in, in a z-score units. So this is the second type of problem that I just mentioned there, where, where we have the portion above or below, and we need to find that mystery cutoff. Now, I want to say something real quick. If, if you find yourself on these types of problems thinking, yeah, I kind of get it, but I never know whether to subtract from one or to double something, um, that means you need to draw a picture. Actually, even if you're not running into that problem, you should always draw a picture. Uh, that's really what resolves that, that type of issue and, and answers those type of questions. And I think it's just good practice in general. So let's start off on all of these types of questions with a normal distribution. Here we're looking at uh, risk, risk scores for investment. And our mean, is given to us as 49.5. Our standard deviation here is given as 14. Okay, so what are we trying to find? We are trying to find, um, we're, we're looking at these customers down here in the bottom 5%, which we often use as a decimal, 0 0.05. Um, we're trying to find this mystery score that separates out the bottom 5% from the other 95%. So that's, that's our goal. We're given a portion above or below. We're trying to find some kind of cutoff or, or raw score here. So how do we do this? Well, what we need to do, first of all, is get a Z score that will cut off bottom 5% from upper 95%. And to do that, we can use a, a calculator, uh, Alex calculator. Um, this, this is one that may jump out at you. So this is actually the portion of a z-score is below uh, a specific z-score, which is what you would put in. We don't have a z-score yet. That's the other type of conversion. That's the other direction. What we have is the portion below or above a certain score. So we need to go with this button right here. Now, what do we, what do we put in there? Uh, first reaction might be a 0.05. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the portion we're given here. Uh, for whatever reason, and, and I actually don't know, Alex has designed this calculator so that you put in the portion to the right of your mystery score. And you always have to do, no matter what the question is asking, to get that z-score, you always put in the portion that's to the right. So in this case, 95% or 0.95 of the distribution is to the right of our mystery score. Now, yeah, we, we want the cutoff uh, that'll give 5% to the left, but that's the same as the cutoff that gives 95% to the right. Yeah, it's the same score. Uh, it's just separating it into these two portions. So we're going to put in 0.95 here and we'll get Let's carry that four places as advised, negative 1.6449. So we're going to put z equals negative 1.6449. That is a negative there, just to make sure that shows up. OK. Now, what happens if we would have put in 0 0.05? We would have got positive 1.6449 out. And that should have been a trigger, a cue that something went wrong because this mystery score we're looking at is below the mean. Anything below the mean is a negative z-score. Anything above the mean is a positive z-score. So if we're trying to find a z-score below the mean and we're getting a positive number, we know we're probably on the wrong side of the distribution. Luckily, it's symmetric. So um, probably all you need to do is multiply by, by negative 1 here. Uh, but you need to have a negative z-score uh, over here. Now to find the raw unit, which is what we're, we're trying to find, this score doesn't have this, this uh, risk aversion or this risk scale questionnaire uh, doesn't have negative scores. We need it in raw units, not in Z scores. So the conversion formula is right here. And we're gonna use this going both directions for both types of problems. Uh, it's just 
what do we have? In this case, we have the z and we need the x. The other type, you have the x and you need the z. So we're going to put this as negative 1.6449 equals x. We don't know what that is. That's what we're solving for. Mean and standard deviation, you're typically given. Uh, unless you're working with raw data, which I don't think we ever are in this class for this, this type of problem. Okay, so we get this equation, need to solve for x. Um, be careful, don't add 49.5 to both sides. We are trying to isolate the x, but we need to multiply first. Uh, memories of PEMDAS in high school algebra here. So we're gonna multiply both sides by 14, then we can add that 49.5 to both sides to give us our x. So let's I'm going to do that off to the side here on a calculator really quickly. Not a bad idea to do it on your own calculator, just to make sure that you're typing things in right with the parentheses. And that should give you x equals, approximately equals at this point, uh, and actually this one's approximately also, 26.4714. Four. So that's the raw sc score. Now another reality check you could do, um, notice that our picture shows that our raw score should be below the mean, and that means it should be less than 49.5, which it is. And, and honestly, if you do that visual check, that takes care of, of the problem that almost anyone has when they make an error on these calculations which would be going on the wrong side of the distribution. That's where the picture helps you. So if you get a number like 80 or something, and you're above the mean, but on the picture, you know you're going for something below the mean, you know to go back and double check. All right, so this should be the answer we're looking for, and they want one decimal place. So we should give them 26.5. Check that. Here we go.